Hello and welcome to another video from the only source of information that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy. And today's video is just going to be me kind of giving you a little bit of a tour of what I've been doing around here while I'm not making decent videos. So, anyways, let me show you my chicken here just making that noise. There he is. And, uh, he wasn't making any noise till I started talking. He apparently thinks I'm talking to him. But I want to show you this too. This is my new car. Yes, it is. And it used to be my mom's car. And there's a reason that it's important for you to know that. I have always tried to not do grown-up stuff. And it doesn't work. If you live in a grown-up world, you pretty much have to do grown-up stuff. And one of the things that grown-ups have to do is maintain their little world. You've got to clean your house and fix your house and mow your grass and all that kind of stuff. And my mom was threatening for a long time not to come visit me anymore because she didn't want to scratch her car up, thankfully, because now it's mine. And I'm glad it's not scratched up. But uh, my driveway had gotten so skinny that she couldn't get her car down. It never bothered me because I was in that old junky yellow car. I'd drive down the driveway and it would be getting scratched all the way down and I didn't care. But one day she said to me, it's amazing that UPS will deliver to your house. And I thought, well, they don't deliver to my house. I haven't received a delivery from UPS or FedEx or the mailman for probably two years. They're always leaving my packages at the corner of my property or at a neighbor's house. And I thought, well, maybe if I clean up my driveway, UPS will start delivering to me again. So anyways, I'm going to show you my driveway. And the driveway was uh, completely uh, grown, overgrown for a couple of years because I hadn't been out here doing any lawn maintenance. And that's why I'm not making videos now, because most of what I'm doing is getting my lawn ready. So I'll show you that right now. All right. Uh, so I guess we need to figure out what to show you. Oh, by the way, this is blueberries. And uh, you see there's a lot of them on here. I think at one time I had 250 blueberry bushes. Probably 150 of them have died, but I still probably have 250 blueberry bushes because all of these little trees down here could be individual blueberry bushes. All you have to do is take a shovel and kind of break the, the roots because the roots are what connect all of these. So if you break those roots, in which I am going to do, and leave these things in the ground till fall, they'll develop their own root systems and these will all be individual plants. That, uh, that I can use to plant elsewhere. And if you see, this is like a line of them. There's a few gaps because there are large trees in the way and, and uh, I have to have this area for turning my car around because I don't want to cut down these palms. These palms are a, are a food, food plant. All right, so let's go on down here and look at some of what's been going on. Now this whole area, I don't know if you can tell, right where the driveway line stops, the woods were coming right to that. This was a particularly bad place. In fact, my mom came out here with her clippers and clipped a bunch of my palms. So I had to come out with, uh, you know, handheld pruners and, uh, and make them look a little prettier. My mom's very happy with me now because I got a lawn. Uh, if we come around here, this tree, which is a, I guess that's a, what do you call it, sweet, sweet gum or a black gum tree. This was in the woods. So all this area that's been cleared here is recent. That's a recent clearing. In fact, most of my blueberries were in the woods. All these blueberry bushes were completely tangled up in vines. You can see that they're they're loading up, and so I had to I had to cut everything down around them so that they could get some sunlight and make some berries. This thing behind this blueberry bush is actually a huckleberry, 
and the tops are of the huckleberries have a lot of berries in them right now and all the reasons I didn't cut it down is because huckleberries do feed birds and it's my hope that the birds will land in this huckleberry tree and eat the huckleberries instead of coming down here and eating my blueberries and those chickens are just for me talking as soon as I start talking they start all that racket oh well this is a wild plum tree it's never actually produced any plums but anyways these are all blueberries I got a gap right here that'll probably get filled with those those shoots that I separate from my other blueberry bushes because a lot of my blueberry bushes have those shoots but see all this area was woods these blueberries that you see right here were invisible just maybe three months ago they end here I, and I don't I don't think I should extend them any further I don't like messing around in front of this guy's house and on top of that uh, there there are trees in the way there so I pretty much have to uh, pretty much have to leave that open just so I can get around all the obstacles this is a a uh, persimmon tree American persimmon tree and I did not plant this I don't think I planted it I may have years ago if I planted it that means it's a it's a female and it'll produce fruit that was completely entangled in woods and so I cut all of the limbs off of these these trees that are next to it if you notice a lot of limbs cut off actually he brought a ladder out here in fact I hacked I really hacked this tree up I didn't like hacking it up but there was really no way for a large del delivery truck to get to get down here <clears throat> and my neighbor he's you know they always these neighbors are not my friends so they always will come out and holler at me anytime I, I come down here they call this trespassing uh, this is actually that power power pole where the line goes into the ground right in between there is the the line separating all of these lots it's a long bunch of row it's a two rows of lots on either side of this driveway the driveway is a legal easement and it's 30 feet long but since it was 30 feet wide but since it was never paved people kind of felt like they they had the freedom to do what they wanted so everybody planted as people were moving in they were putting up boundaries that went right to the center of the easement that's the center of the easement where that bamboo grows and so all that bamboo is actually not on that person's property there it's on the easement but when I got here the person that owns this property and the person that owns this house were already here and there was actually a fight over whether or not to allow me to open up this easement which was legal it was on the deed that I had this easement but they tried their best to keep me from being able to clear this and so I've always tried to keep my driveway as skinny as possible just to make them happy but they're never happy so I just went ahead and widened it to a full 30 feet there's some more blueberries there's a little citrus tree that I planted and like I say this is all easement uh, down here is a uh, camphor tree smells like campophanique because that's where campophanique comes from from camphor trees I planted that there just because they grow quick and I am gonna go ahead and put a few other things in here I think I got a couple of things planted Japanese plums that uh, if they if they come up see there's a little flag and that's a Japanese plum planted right there I think I put about five or six seeds and they all come up Japanese plums are easy to grow there's another one so hopefully uh, you know people that live in the neighborhood will come down here and pick some of this or not oh blueberries yeah look here there's another Japanese plum tree right there that I planted from a seed um, these are all blueberries like I say I planted them all the way down I of course didn't plant them where this tree was I wasn't about to cut down this tree to make space for another blueberry bush but they seem to be doing good you know I've always been told that you have to plant blueberries in direct sunlight but uh, these are not in direct sunlight they're pretty shaded there's a fig tree 
there's a tongue nut tree right next to a uh, quince i think i think that's quince there's a peach peach tree there's a jelly palm it makes plenty of fruit or will make plenty of fruit when it gets bigger but see that's all blueberries all the way down there there's a little pear tree and after that is a chestnut tree another pear tree and i've got a i think uh the vast majority of what's out here is food food producing but I did leave enough native species just because they, they don't take any care and they need to be here. There's a pear tree and another Japanese plum. and Oh, there's a chestnut. I planted that from a seed. Little chestnut tree. Oh yeah, this thing here has been completely covered in woods and thankfully I got it out it probably wouldn't have made any flowers but this is a grapefruit tree and I expect to get plenty of grapefruits this year you can see that you know these little BBs on here those are grapefruits so we'll get plenty I wish you could smell these flowers it's not just orange blossoms that smell good any kind of citrus blossom smells like perfume there's some cactus that's edible there's a fig tree and this is a what do they call that? A pineapple guava. Another fig tree and a citrus tree and a mulberry tree. Look at the little mulberries on there. This year is the first year we've had a really good crop of uh, Japanese plums. I'll show you those in a minute. This in here looks like it's going to do good. I thought it was dead. Uh, a lady called me and said, I've got a Asian pear over here, and I don't have. I want to plant something else there. Come dig this Asian pear up. So I went over and dug it up. It's a paid-for tree. You know, she didn't grow it from a seed. She bought the tree, but she changed her mind. So I went ahead and brought it over here and kept it watered for a while, and it, it actually lived. This is a pomegranate, and from what I understand, pomegranates produce very well down here. I've never seen one, but I've been told by uh, quite a few people that they remember eating pomegranates off of a tree in this area. So we'll just uh, take their word for it. Now over here is a pile of debris. This hole, there's a hole here by my house that holds water. And uh, I just felt like it'd be best to try to fill it up with that stuff and not burn it, but just throw it in there. And if you come back here, I'll show you how bad this is. See, the water, we've had a lot of rain, and the water has washed out the foundation of my house, which, uh, if you, I don't know if you can see this. It's, it's caused this back section to break off, which wouldn't be a big issue since that's just a porch, but it actually ripped the roof apart you can't see it but if you go in in my attic you can see light all the way up that edge and rain when it rains it just pours into my house so that all the walls are rotted out the floors rot it through in this section of the house and i've been doing everything in my power to find somebody that can jack up that part of the house and get my my roof back together anyways uh that should oh wait i gotta show you this where that shovel is stuck in the ground, that used to be uh, wood chips. I had wood chips delivered here, and they went, they came all the way up to my neck, you know. So I had all these wood chips, and I didn't know what I was going to do with them, but I knew that no matter what, they would eventually, you know, rot, compost. And so I've been using this to plant stuff. We'll do a video about my planting as well. That's some good stuff. Anyways, figured that's probably five feet tall, or it was five feet tall, now it's about one foot tall. So it took a lot of wood chips to make all this compost. Here's my, here I'll show you my Japanese plums, what they call loquats. Mm. season's almost over i'm getting very sad to see all my fruit is gone but there's still some up there and it's so delicious 
Yeah, look at him. He's eat, he found one. I don't get any Japanese plums off the lower branches of this thing. Look, here's a chicken up inside there. I used to have some uh, pure games, and they would fly all the way to the top and eat out of this tree, which is cool for me because I can't reach that stuff. I'm not going to go get a ladder to get some fruit. Okay, one more thing I'll show you. Well, two more. There's another Japanese plum. I think I have 25 Japanese plums on this property, and maybe 10 of them are producing some fruit. But see, this is oranges. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> fully expect to get quite a bit of oranges off of that tree. And here's my figs, which you've all seen, I'm sure. Fig trees go all the way across the front and down both sides of my house, and they're all over the roof. I mean, they're taller than the roof, and wildlife loves to get on my roof and just eat my figs, and that's okay because I'm not going up there to get them. But I sure do eat the ones on near the bottom. Okay, so that's it. That's what I've been doing on my spring vacation. I'm doing a lot more. I'll make some videos of some of the other stuff I'm doing. Till later. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.